brought to you by L&M, the modern cigarette that lets you get full, exciting flavor through the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> Solid iron. They're probably trying to run away from that squeaky wheel. You know, Grace says thing. You're going to twist off a spindle one of these days. Uh, it'll last as long as I will. Oh, say, Matt, I, I just drove in from Meadow Flats. Oh, well, well, every man to his own pleasure. It I wasn't say. pleasure, confound it. Now I got something that'll wipe that grin off your face, too. That's so? Yes. Burke Reese and that ornery boy of his. They've been kicking up their heels again. Well, who are they after this time? Pezzy Neller and his wife. They've got that homestead, you know, next to the Reese's. Yeah, I know the place. What happened? Well, it seems Burke Reese and his boy kind of hoo-rawed him a little bit last night. They burnt one of Pezzy's chicken houses and fired off a few shots, and, and Pezzy's acting real funny about it. How do you mean? Well, he didn't want me to say anything about it. He claims he doesn't want any trouble. Doc, with Burke Reese after him, he's already got trouble. <laughs> There's old Pezzy, Mr. Dillon, scratching around the ashes there. Uh-huh. Well, Marshal, Chester, this is a mighty pleasant surprise. Morning, Pezzy. Hi, Mr. Neller. Get down and set a spell. Oh, thank you. Cora's got some coffee on. Be ready directly. Oh, fine. We could do with some. Oh, looks like you might have had a little trouble out here last night, Pezzy. Trouble, Marshal? Well, that chicken house burnt right down to the ground. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but the stud ain't hurt much. He no chore to fix it up. Lose many chickens? Oh, about a dozen, I reckon. Got most of them out, though. Oh, you're mighty lucky. Yes, sir. That's just the way I look at it, Marshal. Mighty lucky. It's a downright horror and shame, if you ask me. As I understand, there were some shots fired last night. Now, look, Marshal. You hadn't got a road clear out here just on account of this little go-round. Well, it didn't amount to a hill of beans. You're a patient man, Pezzy. Just can't abide trouble, I guess. Never could for some reason. Too bad the Reeses don't feel the same way. Isn't that who it was? Burke Reese and that bully and son of his, Spike? Well, I... I just wouldn't really know for sure. It was awful dark last night, Marshal. There was two fellas on horseback. That's all I could tell. Uh-huh. You been bothered before? Oh, a couple of nights this week. Might be the same two fellas. Might not. Hard to say. What'd they do? Oh, just galloped around the house a couple of times, shooting off the guns. Didn't do no harm much, though. Has Burke Race been trying to buy you off, does he? Well, he did make me an offer last week. Only about a third of what the place is worth, though. Anyhow, I ain't aiming to sell. Neither was Ed Talmadge. 
He had the homestead in Arthur Reese, remember? Yes, I remember. Uh, Reese bought that place for about a third of what it was worth, does he? From Ed's widow. You know, I never could figure who Dry Gulch did that night. Look, Pesce, if you'll sign a complaint, I'll have both the Reese's locked up inside an hour. Won't do no good, Marshal. It is dark. I, I couldn't swear in court it was them. And you know what'll happen. You don't even pack a gun, does he? Guns just lead to trouble, Marshal. I'm a mild sort of man, I reckon, and a believer in nature. Like with their herd of cattle. Storm comes up, they just turn their tail to the wind and wait it out. A man can learn a whole lot from animals. Sure he can, does he? But Burke Reese learned his from a mountain lion. <laughs> yourself of old-fashioned ideas. Why don't you live modern? Live modern. Live, live, live modern. Free up. Freshen up your taste. Smoke an L&M. Live modern. Smoke modern. Smoke L&M. Enjoy full, exciting flavor through L&M's pure white miracle tip. L&M draws easier, tastes richer, smokes cleaner. That's why today more people are changing to L&M than to any other cigarette. So free up, freshen up your taste, live modern, change to L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Smoke at L&M. It's America's fastest-growing cigarette. Declare, Mr. Dillon, the Long Branch ain't never had this big a Saturday afternoon before. Quite a crowd in town, all right. I don't even think we can get up the bar. Well, we can edge along the side here. Well, maybe I can do it empty, but it's sure going to be a tight squeeze ooching out full of beer. You get that, Paul Chester, and I'll leave you here. Well, imagine you in here in daylight. Uh, Chester needed a beer, Kitty. Oh, he brought you along to chaperone it, huh? Oh, I got a hunch you brought me along to pay for it. <laughs> How you been? No complaints. Look at this crowd. Did you ever see such a mob? Yeah, from the looks of things, the fights will be starting even before dark. Yeah. Uh, want to have a beer with us? No, thanks. It's too early for me. But if you're around about 3 a.m., I'll have some supper with you. Sounds good. Try to make it. Mm-hmm. Well, he seems happy enough. Mm, that's old Burke Reese, Mr. Young. Yeah. And Spike along with it. Now, there's a pair that's due for a hanging. They're overdue, Kitty. <laughs> well, howdy there, Marshal. Mighty nice to find you on the job. Ain't that right, Spike, huh? <laughs> you know, I can usually find some good in anybody but those two. Especially after they murdered Ed Talmadge last year. There was no evidence, Kitty. No witnesses. Well, all right, Matt, but everybody knew they did it. Yeah, but the law has to go on proof or it stops being the law. But people are afraid of them, Matt. They're afraid even to go into court and tell what they know. Uh, Matt! No. Matt, come here. Uh, just a minute, Doc. Come on, Chester. Let's see what he wants. Um, I'll talk to you later, Kitty. Don't forget, Matt. Supper at three. Uh, out there in the street, Matt, some folks got themselves in a peck of trouble. Oh, who? Uh, Pezzy Neller and his missus. When they come out of Jonas's store and started to drive off, the team pulled the front axle out from under the wagon. Let the whole bed drop right down into the street. I see. Uh, look, uh, you better stay here, Doc. Uh, excuse me. Would you let me through here, please? Excuse me, please. Looks like you had a little trouble there, Pizzi. Oh, Oh, hello, Marshal. Yeah, I, I reckon the kingpin must have fell out. 
Kingpins don't fall out, does he? They fit in from the top. Hmm. Guess to do with that. Well, then it uh, must have bounced up and fell out over the top somehow. Uh huh. Did you see Burke Reese take that pen out? Uh, no, sir. Can't say I did, Marshal. Uh, me and Cora was inside the store there. All right, what about the rest of you? Any of you see Burke Reese or anybody else fooling around this wagon? Not one of you saw a thing, huh? Uh, don't bother about it, Marshal. We just lost a little flowers, all. About all we bought, in fact, except a roll of heavy wire for a clothesline. Of course, it wasn't hurt none. You all right, Miss Nella? It ain't nothing, Marshal. Just cut my mouth a little. You better let Doc take a look at it. Oh, the bleeding's pert near stuck. Reckon I bumped it on the kickboard when I got thrown out. Let's see, if you don't care about yourself, you might think about your wife here. Now, don't you go plaguing him, Marshal. Because he's been taking care of me for a good lot of years now. And he ought to keep on doing it, ma'am. Because he's got his principles, Marshal. And I respect him for him. He's a mild man and he can't abide violence. All right. All right. Uh, some of you men give him a hand there, will you? Come on, Chester. Well, you sure can't help him much when he won't lift a hand to help himself. There's one way I can, Chester. I don't like doing it, but somebody's got to. What's that? I'm going to show Burke Reese up for the coward that he is. Free yourself of old-fashioned ideas. Why don't you live modern? Live modern. Live, live, live modern. Free up. Freshen up your taste. Smoke an L&M. Only the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip can bring all of L&M's full, exciting flavor through to you. And that's the big reason why today more people are changing to L&M than to any other cigarette. Remember, L&M draws easier, tastes richer, smokes cleaner. So live modern. Change to L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Smoke at L&M. It's America's fastest growing cigarette. Chester, you move on down there by the end of the bar. Just keep them off my back, that's all. All right, sir. But you watch him, Mr. Dillon. Make him be awful mean. Well, what was the trouble out there, Matt? I didn't hear any shooting. Later, Kitty. Right now, you better stay clear. Matt, where are you going? Getting up a little game. Like to sit in? Would you? Reese, you're a filthy murdering coward. Now, you got no call to talk like that, Marshal. You shot Ed Talmadge in the back last year so you could buy out his homestead. That's so? Now you're after Pezzy Nuller. You shot up his place a couple of times and burnt one of his buildings. Pezzy say all that, did he? As he's not one to stick up for his rights, so somebody's got to do it for him. Reese, I just called you a rotten coward. Hold it, Spike. That's just what he's trying to get us to do. It won't work, Marshal. I ain't going to draw on you. Of course not. You're too yellow, both of you. 
Except with a man like Pezzy Nuller, who doesn't wear a gun. He ain't drawn, Marshal. Didn't you hear me, Burke? I called you a lying coward. I'm sitting right here. No, you're not. Now get up on your feet. <laughs> get up! I know you, Marshal. You'd never shoot a man down cold. I wouldn't do. Spike, reach over slow. Then buckle my gun. You belt. touch that belt, Spike, and I'll blast you out of your chair. All right. Leave it, Spike. But I still ain't making no move. No? Well, maybe this will do it. All right, what about it, Reese? I'm... I'm staying right here on the floor, Marshal. You sit tight, Spike. I told you, Marshal, no matter what you do, I ain't gonna draw against you. You're a smart one, Reese. You're smart just like a rattlesnake. Now you get up and get out of here. Get up, both of you, before I kick you to death. Come on, Spike. Well, I've never seen you act like that before. Yeah, I know, Kitty. Not that I blame you. I know they wouldn't draw either one of them. I just wanted to show them up for the cowards they are. Well, now I'm afraid there's only one more thing I can do for Pezzy Nuller. What's that, Matt? The tender's funeral. Oh, old, ch- old Chester, this is the worst coffee I ever tasted. I broke better in bombing fluid. Well, you kept yeah. your mouth shut, Doc, till after you'd swallowed three whole cups. Well, no wonder my throat was still paralyzed from the first swallow. Mm, well, you're sure oh. losing a lot of sass for being paralyzed in the neck. Oh. You want some more, Mr. Dillon? Oh, oh not right now, Chester. And by Jim, you complain about it, Doc, but I notice you always come hot putting over here first thing when you wake up. It's a trial by torture, Chester. If I can live through Chester's coffee, I can face anything the day brings. <laughs> well, forever more. What do you know? Yeah. What is it, Chester? Pezzy Nuller. Coming down the street there in his wagon. No. Well, Matt, how do you figure a man like that? He doesn't want any trouble, he says. He can't abide violence. He don't even realize he's on barred time. I guess not, Doc. All he was worrying about yesterday afternoon was getting back home and putting up a clothesline for the missus. Um, uh, just a couple of babes in a forest of wolves. He stopped right out in front here, Mr. Dillon. Marshal! Marshal Dillon! Now, let's see what he wants. Morning, Pezzy. You're up early, aren't you? Reckon I am at that, Marshal. Oh, hello, Doc. Mighty glad to find you here. Are there something wrong? Well, in a way, I guess there is, Marshal. Had a little accident off our place during the night. Accident? Who? Doc, I reckon you better take a look there in the wagon bed. Just throw back the cover. All right. Give me a hand here, Chester. All right, Mighty sorry to have this happen, Marshal, but it was just one of them things that couldn't be helped, I reckon. Mr. Dillon, it's the Reese's. What? They're dead, Matt. Both of them. Their their necks have been broken. There's marks across their throats. It's like they've been hanged. Yes, sir. That's exactly what I said to Cora this morning when we found him laying there. Looked like they'd been hanged, what I said. Found them where, Pezzy? What happened? Well, sir, me and Cora woke up last night and heard some shooting and hurra on like them other times. Yeah. Only it stopped all of a sudden and the horses galloped off, so we went back to sleep. This morning when I come out, I found these two laying right there in my chicken yard that are in doornails. Now, go on. Well, I figured it was that doggone clothesline, Marshal. I put it up good and solid, because Cora always hates to have her wash get down in the dirt. 
And I reckon these two just didn't see it in the dark that way. They rode right into it, huh? Man's got a number 20 rigging cable hooked under his chin and a galloping horse stretching his feet in the stirrups. Well, <laughs> sure don't do his neck no good. No, sure doesn't. Well, uh, you better take him down to the undertakers. Yeah, all right. I'll ride along with you, Pezzy. Might as well earn my fee. Well, I'm sure sorry to put you fellas out this way, but... Man can't be expected to go around warn all his neighbors every time he puts up a new clothesline. No, I guess not, does he? But that I got to change the darn thing when I get back home. Put it a foot and a half too high for some fool reason. Why, well, Cora can't even reach it. Come on, get yeah, boss. Stop in to see us, Marshal, whenever you're out our way. Yeah. Yeah, I will, does he? Well, Chester... Never sell a mild man short. Well, you said them Reese's was overdue for hanging, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Well, they're sure not overdue anymore. moment, our star, William Conrad. We laugh at Humpty Dumpty's tumble. We roar at the comedian who slips on a banana peel. But the unfunny fact is that almost 14,000 Americans died from falls in their own homes. Why did they fall? Silly little reasons, mostly. There was a toy on the stairs that they didn't see. There was that loose board on the porch they'd always meant to fix. Or maybe the scatter rugs scattered at the wrong moment. Or they climbed on a chair to straighten the drapes. It seemed so important at the time. Home accidents are second only to those on the highways and the terrible mortality they cause. And falls account for almost half of home accidents. Look around your house today and see that the causes of falls are removed wherever possible, that floors and stairs are in good repair and well lighted, that obstructions are removed and carpets secured. See that a slick wax job doesn't slide you into the hospital. Have a proper stepladder and use it instead of climbing on unsteady furniture. It's so simple to prevent accidents. So tragic to face their consequences. Check your home for fall traps today. And now, William Conrad. You know, on the frontier, there was usually plenty of fresh meat to be had. Antelope, venison, buffalo, prairie chicken. And yet next week, a man dies because of one small yearling calf. And that was the West. Gun smoke. Produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Messler. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Ray Kemper and Tom Hanley. Featured in the cast were Ralph Moody, John Daner, and Helen Cleave. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week for another story on Guns.